Hello and welcome to another one of Eric's projects. Tonight working on the 1952 Chevy Styline again. Uh, when I bought this car it wasn't charging and it turned out to be a voltage regulator that was bad. Well, I replaced the voltage regulator and things have been great. Well, but the last week or so the uh, charging hasn't been charging the way it should. So I'm guessing maybe the generator is bad could be some wiring, this wiring 62 years old, um, could be losing some connection. So tonight we're going to see if we can verify whether or not the generator is working or there's some wiring issues or what's going on with this charging system. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, here we go. This is the generator on the 216 style line. Um, we've got the wiring here. There's only two wires on the back of this. We have two terminals, one marked F and one marked A. Now the F terminal, this wire here, oh, you can see it's kind of broken. Maybe that's my whole problem right there. We'll find out. The F terminal goes into the wire loom on up the fender well to the voltage regulator into the field terminal. Back down on the generator. Back down here on the generator. Back to the A terminal. Well, off this A terminal is a larger diameter wire here that goes into the same wire loom on up the inner fender well and goes to the gen generator port tab on the voltage regulator. Now this battery one it feeds it goes from here inside to the ammeter and then over to the battery and that's what charges your battery. So we'll start this thing up disconnect this battery wire and see what kind of amperage we get if we're actually charging the battery from this wire or what the issue is. Maybe it's a faulty gauge, maybe it's a faulty wire, maybe it's just a faulty generator, not sure. So we'll start there and see what happens. Not sure how well you can see it. We got the uh, positive lead on the battery terminal of the voltage regulator and the negative lead on the wire coming that's off the battery terminal on the voltage regulator. And we are showing nothing, no amperage whatsoever. So let's find out what's going on. Okay, what I'm going to try to do first, just before I. Uh condemn the generator or a new voltage regular or anything like that. Um, this is old fiber wrapped wiring from the 50s. It's pretty crusty. Uh, we've seen earlier there's a break in the field line. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a piece of wire and disconnect my current field wire on the generator, disconnect it up on the voltage regulator also, and I'm just going to take a piece of wire and just run a new lead. Uh, Tighten it down on the field field terminal on the generator. Tighten it up on the field terminal on the voltage regulator. And I'll see if that fixes the problem. If not, I'll do the same thing for the uh, amperage terminal that goes to the generator terminal on the voltage regulator. Basically, I'm just running two new wires just to see if there's an issue with the wiring between the generator and the voltage regulator because that will cause a no charging problem and if that is the case, it's potentially an easier fix, less expensive fix, depending on how you want to do it. I could tie some new wire um, just against the current volt, uh, the current um, line that's there, the wire loom, or I could buy a replacement underhood wire loom, which you know I, I probably should do anyway. The 
all of this wiring is starting to get pretty old and frail. So let's see if that fixes it. Okay, as you can see we got the wire hooked up on the field terminal as well as the other end hooked up on the voltage regulator into the field port on the voltage regulator or field tab whichever you call it so let's see if that fixed the problem so as you notice down here On the old field wire, you can see where it's got broken insulation, may have some broken wires in there. So let's see if that was the problem. Well, it doesn't look like that fixed the problem. Holding headlights on, it pulls down to a discharge with no change in accelerator change. Let's try the armature wire. Okay. We got the new wire hooked up on the armature, um, armature stud on the generator, as well as on the armature tab on the voltage regulator. Let's see if that cured the problem. No, it did not. On to some other tests. Yeah, a generator is basically just like a little electric motor. It spins, puts off some current, and that current's transferred to other things. So to test this generator, uh, easy kind of test for it, first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the belt off. And that way we can spin it as a motor without being hooked to the engine and without having the engine running. Just to see if this thing functions. Okay, the next step after we have the belt off is we're going to take these wires back off and we're actually going to hook them together. We're going to take a jumper and we're going to hook from the armature to the field. Alright, we've got our jumper wire hooked up here. It's the same lead connecting the two together. Now, we need to take another jumper wire, this one here, this other end is hooked to the positive terminal of the battery because we need uh, we need battery voltage over here. Now we're going to take this and we're going to touch it on the armature and see if this generator goes around. We've got our electric motor. That tells me this generator should be working. Okay, the next step in testing this generator is uh, gone ahead and put the belt back on. On these old cars, you don't want to get this belt very tight because these are just bronze bushings inside of this generator. Um, not like modern steel roller ball bearings, steel ball bearings, nothing like that. So we don't want that belt really tight, but we don't want it really loose. It's kind of a kind of a balancing act, and especially with an old water pump, you know, I don't want to put undue stress on that water pump and end up killing the water pump somewhere while I'm on the road. Anyway, we got the belt back on the generator. We've got the jumper hooked up between the two terminals again and what we're going to do is we're going to start the car and we're going to take the voltmeter and I'm going to my my voltmeter setting is I got it on 30 volts because 3 is too low and it's a 6 volt car so we got it set on 30 volts we're going to start the car I'm going to take the negative lead of the voltmeter and ground it ground it on the case ground it somewhere on the engine ground it anywhere then I'll take the positive and I'm going to put it on the armature tab. And we're going to get a volt reading and see what this thing reads for voltage. Is it putting out enough voltage? We've already discovered that it does run when we put power to it 
and we turned it into a little electric motor and we made it go around. So it does go around, but does it work good enough? Let's see. Now the one thing you don't want to do when you're doing this is do this little test too long because the magnetic fields that build up inside of here come out of one terminal and being without a jumper it's going back in which is making it stronger which is making the other field stronger which goes out and it'll just keep ramping up and ramping up and ramping up and your voltage will end up getting so high that you will burn your generator up and then you will have a bad generator. So let's run this test but we're not going to run it for real long we're just going to see if it works. All right, doing this test. Positive lead on the terminal. Negative to ground. Half a volt. I don't think this generator is working. Well, we tested it, and uh, this generator is putting out a half a volt. It should be putting out at least six volts, and with the jumper on there, it should have ramped up and ramped up. Looks like I'm going to have to get a new generator. Well, we've got the generator off. Here it is here. So I'll take this down to the alternator generator shop tomorrow and have them rebuild it. I much prefer to have something like this rebuilt in town by a local person who's done lots of them for years. Rather than getting some remanufactured unit that you have no idea where it came from or who built it or how much care or quality they put into their work. So anyway, we learned how to test a generator, a couple different quick easy ways. Uh, one way without instruments at all just to see if it even goes around and then to see is it putting out enough voltage as well as we check some wiring between the generator and the voltage regulator which obviously must be good because the new wiring didn't change anything so we'll get this rebuilt and get it back on the car and be back on the road with the charging system so thanks for watching another one of Eric's projects working on the style line again uh, for other people that are watching this that have seen a couple of things with the GMC Jimmy, I've got some work coming up with that, uh, building a front drive shaft for it, and then we'll be doing a cut and turn on the Dana 60 front axle, but not your standard cut and turn. We'll be doing it a little bit differently. So, thanks for watching, and God bless you.